Okay. Now, in this lecture, we will discuss the thermodynamics of blast furnace iron making. It is little elaborate compared to what I did the basic thermodynamics during the iron making steel making in the first lecture. Okay. So, the concept covered here it will be the oxygen potential of iron oxide and the blast furnace gases and their correlation and then iron oxide phase stability diagram, direct indirect reduction, CO utilization and carbon efficiency. Now, this is the Ellingham diagram. This diagram I also projected earlier also. So, Ellingham diagram you are very well known. Most of you know about this diagram. It is basically gives the relative stability of various oxides and mainly the pure oxide. It is the pure metal pure oxide system. And is y axis that is the this gives basically the oxygen potential what is called the oxygen potential. Now, this oxygen potential there is the y axis is basically the standard free energy change. Standard free energy change is basically the delta G naught is equal to R T ln of R T ln of partial pressure of oxygen. Okay. So, that is the y axis that is basically the oxygen potential of oxide various oxide and it is varying with the temperature. So, for example, this line gives you for the Fe 2 O 3 that is Fe 2 O 3. So, for Fe 2 O 3 oxygen potential of Fe 2 O 3 with temperature varies like this, this is the way it varies and for Fe 3 O 4 this is the oxygen potential of Fe 3 4 and how it is varies with temperature and this is for the APO. So, for three oxides you can find how the oxygen potential varying with temperature and it is very evident that partial pressure that is the oxygen potential of Fe 2 O 3 is much greater compared to that of Fe 3 O 4 and Fe 3 O 4 oxygen potential is greater than APO. Higher oxygen potential means if you just keep this oxide in a reducing atmosphere Fe 2 O 3 will reduce fast because it has very high oxygen potential. So, and then Fe 3 O 4 will be reduced and then Fe will be reduced. So, basically Fe 2 O 3 to Fe reduction is not direct. First Fe 2 O 3 will convert to Fe 3 O 4, then Fe 3 O 4 to Fe and then Fe to Fe. Right. So, this is the relative stability of uh, different oxides. So, that is the thing we can say there is the relative from this Ellingham diagram we can find that relative stability Fe is the most stable and then Fe 3 O 4 and Fe 2 O 3 is the least stable oxide. Okay. So, among these three oxide this is the least stable and as we will see in the blast furnace as the blast furnace gas has the higher reduction potential at the bottom of the furnace where the CO forms and as the gas moves up as we will see later on that is its reduction potential. Uh, basically decreases. At the upper part reduction potential become very less because the CO concentration slowly goes on decreasing as you move very up in the furnace. But in that case the reduction potential is less but Fe 2 O 3 with the reduction potential you can easily reduce that Fe 2 O 3 to Fe 3 O 4 even Fe 3 O 4 can be reduced to Fe O. But only Fe O is quite stable it requires little higher reduction potential. So, it will be reduced in the lower part in the middle of the furnace. Okay. So, that we have seen that is the reactions that is in the top part it is the Fe 2 O 3 get reduced to Fe 3 O 4 and then Fe 3 O 4 reduced to Fe O and then little lower Fe O get reduced to Fe. Okay. So, this is now let us see how the oxygen potential uh, uh, of the gas changes as it moves up into the blast furnace. This is very interesting to see because how the oxygen potential is changes because then also we can understand that thing. Just now we said there is a, it is the reduction potential of the gas which is just inversely proportional to the oxidation potential of the gas. So, how the gas potential changes that is moves from the bottom to the top that we have to understand. And you can see the oxygen potential just here at this point A when the gas enters right gas entered at this point A. A basically gas enters around 1000 degree centigrade and is oxidation potential is around 0.4 kilo calorie per mole. Why it is so? Because you know the partial pressure of oxygen in air is around 21.21 atmosphere. 
So, if you make it RTLN of PO2, it will be 4 kilocalorie per mole roughly. So, here. So, the inlet gas at 1000 degree centigrade has a oxygen potential of around minus 4 kilocalorie per mole. Okay, there is the blast furnace gas. There, there is the there is the oh, I can say it is the basically the air blast oxygen potential of the preheated air blast uh, just at the tuer level. And now when it enters the tuer and comes in contact with the carbon, it reacts with the carbon forming the CO gas. Right. So is oxidation is reduction. There is the oxidation potential is suddenly very much. That is the oxidation potential you can find it will come here, here, here and at this point. It will just reduce to this point. Oxidation potential will suddenly reduce in presence of the carbon because it will react with the carbon forming the CO gas. Suddenly its reduction potential will increase and the oxidation potential will decrease and where what will be the oxidation potential? It will almost follow the basically C plus O2 forming the twice CO line. So, you can find this value is coming around 150 minus 150 kilocalorie per fold and that we can get from the Ellingham diagram. From this diagram we can know that this value will be around minus 150 kilocalorie per mole. Now what happens as the gas moves up okay, in the blast furnace, if you see the blast furnace is like this. And you have this is the layers, alternate layers of ore and coke, ore and coke like this. So, this is say ore and this is say coke, this is ore, this is coke, this is ore, this is coke, ore, coke, ore, coke like this. And you have the gas that is the this way and the CO gas is moving up like this, right. CO forms and it moves up. So, when the C that is the here, when it come in contact with the carbon, it's oxidation potential is there and as it moves to the old layer, here old, basically Fu is there at this location when it is if in the lower part of the furnace it is only the Fu will be I do not know if it is there. So, when it interact with the ore then its oxygen potential will increase suddenly. Why it is increased? Because the oxygen from the oxide that is the oxygen because it will reduce the oxide Fu to Fe and that oxygen will enter into the gas. So, when the gas will enter, there is oxygen will enter into the gas, is oxidation potential increases. So, oxidation potential will increase as the gas encounter the wool layer and then subsequently when again it encounters the carbon coke layer, again the CO will form and its reduction potential will increase or oxidation potential will decrease. So, this is the way the potential again will come down and when again it will encounter the wool layer, it will increase, right it will increase and then decrease, increase, decrease like this. So, as the gas moves up, as we can find, there is a reduction potential, uh, there is the oxidation potential as I said, it is very low here, that is the, your oxidation potential here suppose and then as the gas moves up, right, from here as the gas moves up, it moves like this and then, then, then finally it will go like this. So, this is this is the way your uh, oxidation potential will go, right. Initially, it is low and then it will increase, it will fluctuate to some distance and beyond that is oxidation potential will increase only, there is no fluctuation. Why? And this actually, this is the temperature, uh, this is below less than 900 degree centigrade. So, in the upper part, when the temperature is less than 900 degree centigrade, then its oxidation potential only increase because only the CO will reduce the iron oxide, iron ore. So, it will take the oxygen from the ore, so it oxidation potential will increase and reduction potential similarly decrease. So, it is the here basically is oxidation potential is there low, right, oxidation potential is low and then it will fluctuate and then oxidation potential increases. As the gas moves up, it oxidation potential increases or reduction potential decreases. So, that is why you have found that here where the oxidation potential is very low, basically Fe 2 3, Fe 2 3 will convert to Fe 3 O 4 and then your Fe 3 O 4, Fe 3 O 4 will convert to Fe, Fe O, right. And in the lower position, your all the other reaction take place, Fe 2 Fe, Fe 2 Fe 
will take place here right so and uh, so that's why this is the thing and uh, and so here you can find as the gas ascends its oxygen in potential is increased in presence of fu and decreased like this so gas gets charged and discharged okay up to 900 and beyond 900 this oxidation potential increases as i said okay so no charging of blast furnace gas below 900 degrees centigrade charging means is reduction potential never further increase because below 900 degree centigrade there is no in situ CO generation. So, as I said that is below 900 you have no in situ CO generation and uh, uh, then only whatever the CO has been generated in the lower part of the furnace that will only act as an reducing agent in the upper part of the furnace right like for reduction of Fe2O3 to Fe3O4 and all this thing Fe3O4 to Fe4. So, that is why that is called the indirect reduction to some extent. And so, I will come to that direct reduction, indirect reduction, but you can understand now why it is happening that uh, why the sequence of reduction take place in different part. Now, we come to the FeCO phase stability diagram. This is a very important diagram in term, uh, because I was discussing the process in terms of oxidation potential. I think it is better to describe the process in terms of the volume percent of CO into the blast furnace gas because initially at the 12 level everything is CO as the gas moves up it take up the ore oxygen and forming some amount of the CO2, CO get converted to CO2, CO get oxidized to CO2 and iron get uh, iron ore get reduced to the iron right. So, so as a result basically as the gas moves up it is basically a mixture of CO and CO2 and composition of the CO and CO2 in the gas changes and that shows basically the what is the potential of the gas, uh, reduction potential of the gas you can understand from there. Now, you can find this is basically the equilibrium light, this is the equilibrium gas composition in the blast furnace and this is dictated by the reaction that is called the Boudoir reaction, that is called the Boudoir. P O U D O U A R D Boudoir reaction. Boudoir reaction is basically your CO2 plus C forming twice CO. So, this reaction is also called the Boudoir reaction, very important reaction, and that this reaction only gives what is the equilibrium composition of blast furnace gas at any temperature. Okay. So, that gives you this line gives you the equilibrium composition of the blast furnace gas. And these are the lines, these lines show you the equilibrium line between FU, FE equilibrium line. So, if the gas composition is here somewhere, so you can expect that iron will be stable here. Okay? And in this region, because this region is below it, so FU will be stable. And this line basically Fe3O4 to Fe equilibrium, Fe3O4 plus CO forming FeO plus CO2. So, in this uh, you can understand this is the equilibrium line for Fe3O4 and FeO. So, below this any gas composition above it will give you the FeO and below it is the Fe3O4. That is why Fe3O4 is stable in this region. In this region, in this region it is the FeO that is stable and above this here it is the Fe iron that is stable. And Fe2O3 stable at a very low percentage volume percentage of CO you can find Fe2O3 get converted to Fe3O4. So, we do not find any Fe2O3 uh, page in this diagram because it is almost it get reduced instantaneously at a very lower volume fraction of CO. So, you cannot find it may be below this line some amount of Fe2O3 is there. But most of the cases here it is Fe3O4, FeO, Fe and also at lower temperature here also you can get some direct, some direct uh, reduction of Fe, you can get Fe here also. So, what you get that is the thing, this, this is basically gives you basically here this FeCO phase diagram is nothing but volume percent of CO is plotted against temperature and different stable phases are shown in this diagram, right. And now, let us see that equilibrium percentage CO required to reduce Fe2O3 and Fe3O4, Fe2O3 to Fe3O4 almost 0 as I said, but at 900 degree centigrade Fe3O4 to FeO reduction, Fe3O4 to FeO reduction if I say at 900 degree centigrade 
Fe three O four to Fe reduction, how much? It takes around twenty percent off. You can find this is the twenty percent. This is around. This is the twenty percent. So twenty percent volume percent of CO is required if you want to reduce. At least it will be in equilibrium. That is Fe three O four Fe. In this equilibrium, twenty volume percent of CO will be in equilibrium. What does it mean? And for Fe to Fe equilibrium. Around seventy percent CO will be in equilibrium with the FeO Fe system. What does it mean? It means that if you want to convert FeO to Fe, then you have to have volume percent of CO in the CO CO two mixture. Basically, when I say volume percent of CO, it is basically in the CO CO two mixture. Don't without considering the nitrogen and all this. So, if in the CO CO two mixture, volume percent of CO is seventy percent. Okay, then you won't be able to read that. Then Fe and Fe will be in equilibrium. If you exceed that volume percent of CO beyond seventy percent, then only you can reduce Fe to Fe. So it means you can utilize only thirty percent of the CO for reducing the iron oxide Fe to Fe. Similarly, for Fe three O four to Fe, Fe three O four to Fe. You can utilize here eighty percent. Twenty percent will be in equilibrium, so you can utilize eighty percent of the CO. But in case of FeO to Fe, seventy percent will be in equilibrium, and you can utilize only thirty percent of the CO. So percentage utilization of CO is thirty percent for FeO Fe conversion, and eighty percent for Fe three Fe conversion. And as a result, you can write this is the equilibrium equation. You can write for FeO FeO conversion. This is the equilibrium reaction that you can write. FeO plus 3.3 CO. How the 3.3 factor comes? 3.3 factor comes because you require 100 by 100 by 30. Because 30% only you can utilize 100%. So this gives you 3.3. This is the factor is coming from here. So FeO plus 3.3 CO. It will form Fe plus 2.3 CO will be in equilibrium with the CO2, one mole of CO2. So this is the equilibrium reaction. Similarly, for Fe3O, Fe3O4 to FeO, your equilibrium reaction will be like this because here it comes from 80% utilization. You have 20% in equilibrium, 80% utilization. So 1.25 mole of CO will be required to reduce one mole of Fe3O4. And 0.25 mole of CO will be in equilibrium with one mole of CO2. So these are the equilibrium reactions. So actually, this is the reaction that you take. This much of CO is required. It is not the one mole of CO will convert FeO to Fe. Okay. So at 900 degrees centigrade, Fe requirement is quite high. And another thing you can find that is that this is the actual blast furnace gas, and this is the equilibrium blast furnace gas. So always you can find that the blast furnace gas remain too much unutilized because of kinetic limitation. It is not that the blast furnace will be in equilibrium. So equilibrium gas composition uh, you may not uh, expect into the blast furnace. Although this this line shows to be very non-efficient, not much efficient blast furnace. In, in a very good blast furnace, this line may come here also. Okay. Thank you.